Hi, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go through the um, DNA and genetics chapter five, lesson three, science notebook. So if you want to follow along with me, that'd be great. I'm working on the non honors version of the science notebook. So here it is. I'm going to open it up with Adobe Acrobat for Google Drive. Okay, when I go to open it for Adobe Acrobat for Google Drive, um, you can use other um, tools um, as long as you get to the point where you can write on the document. I'm not, I don't really care which version you use. Okay, but if you're using Adobe Acrobat for Google Drive, you can follow right along with me. Okay, so we're going to start off with what do we think statements. Okay, any condition present at birth is genetic. Okay, so I need to say if I agree or I disagree with that. And then a change in the sequence of an organism's DNA always changes the organism's traits. Do I agree or disagree with that? Okay, so in this before column, okay, I'm either going to put an A or a D. Okay, once I've entered that, okay, then I'll come down to the next box and you'll see the save button at the top. Okay, pops up and I'm going to make sure that periodically I save my work and then it will automatically be saved into Google Classroom. Hey, okay, um, so I answer my second question. Hey, okay, um, agree or disagree. Hey, okay, remember, this is just what you think right now. So any condition, hey, okay, present at birth is genetic. Hey, okay, so any um, trait, any... Um, any characteristic, are they genetic? Okay, all the conditions present at birth for an individual. Okay, um, a change in the sequence of an organism's DNA, okay, and that's gonna be our focus for this unit is on DNA and protein. Okay, so DNA always changes the organism's traits. Is that true or false? Okay, so you answer agree or disagree over here and then you can move on. A, um, other thing to keep in mind are the key concepts. What is DNA? What's the role of RNA in the production of, pro of protein production? And how do changes in the sequence of, of DNA affect traits? A, um, so as you read the lesson, write the answer to each question. Answer the question using the information from the paragraph. A, so our questions are over here, mainly on the left-hand side, occasionally on the right or at the bottom of the page. Okay, so I'm looking at the structure of DNA. Okay, the structure of DNA. Cells put molecules together by following a set of, in, of, of instructions. Genes provide the directions for a cell to put together molecules that express traits such as eye color or seed shape. Recall that a gene is a section of a chromosome. Chromosomes are made of proteins and deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. DNA is an organism's genetic material. A gene is a segment of DNA on a chromosome. Strands of DNA in a chromosome are tightly coiled like a coiled spring. This coiling makes it possible for more genes to fit in a small space. Okay, so our first question is explain what, okay, and we are explaining what DNA is. Okay, we could use this information in paragraph number one Okay, to help us explain what DNA is. Okay, I don't know why, but I keep jumping back to the top of the page. Okay, then I can keep reading. Okay, so you can either answer now or wait till you get a little more information. Okay, it says a complex molecule. The shape of DNA is like a twisted ladder. is called a double helix. You can see a double helix in the figure on the next page. How did scientists discover the shape of DNA? Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins used x-rays to study DNA. Some of the x-rays showed that DNA has a double helix shape. Another scientist, James Watson, saw that one saw one of the DNA x-rays. Watson worked with Francis Crick to build a model of DNA that used the information from the x-rays and chemical information about DNA discovered by another scientist, Erwin Chargoff. Eventually, Watson and Crick were able to build a model that showed how smaller molecules of DNA bond together and form a double helix. Okay, so again, I would use the information probably from the first two paragraphs to help you answer what is DNA. And remember, if you need to add additional information, if it's not fitting here, you can go up and add text here. Okay, click there, okay, and you can make your text box larger 
okay, um, to whatever size you need, okay? Once you get that answered, let's move on to the shape of DNA. Four nucleotides shape DNA. DNA has a twisted ladder shape that is caused by molecules called nucleotides. A nucleotide is a molecule made of a nitrogen base, a sugar, and a phosphate group. Sugar and phosphate groups form the sides of the DNA ladder. The nitrogen bases bond and form the rungs or the steps of the ladder. There are four nitrogen bases, adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine or we abbreviate them A, C, T, and G. A and T always bond together, and G and C always bond together. The figure below shows how the sugar phosphate groups and the nitrogen bases form the twisted DNA shape. Hey, okay, so we can now answer what is a nucleotide. So it's up here in bold, hey, and there's italics, hey, that explain what it is. Hey, what forms the rungs of the DNA double helix? Hey, that was also in that paragraph, or you can take a look at the picture here and use that picture, hey, and the labels on the picture to help you answer question number three. Okay, and looking at this picture, it's important that you take a look at all the parts on the picture, right? So I see there's something that has a circle with a P inside of it, and I've got a pentagon shape with an S inside of it. And then I have these C, G, T, A um, molecules. Okay, so I'm gonna have you guys take a look at that picture, okay, and then look at the labels, okay? On here, the label, it says, sugar phosphate groups form the sides of the helix, right? So that's the sides of the ladder. And it goes phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. Okay, if we look at the middle of our DNA double helix, okay, there are nitrogen bases. In this case, we have cytosine. It's bonded to or attached to guanine. Okay, so a phosphate, a sugar, and a base, one base makes up a nucleotide, okay, and one nucleotide in one strand of DNA is bonded to another nucleotide in, an, in the complementary strand of DNA. So in this case, C pairs with G. Hey, this guanine nucleotide, guanine is attached to the sugar, which is attached to the phosphate. Hey, and then there is a long chain of these nucleotides, hey, that are all connected by the bases in the middle. How DNA replicates. Cell, cells contain DNA and chromosomes. So so every time a cell divides, all chromosomes must be copied for the new cell. The new DNA is identical to the existing DNA. Replication is the process of copying a DNA molecule to make another DNA molecule. In the first part of replication, the strands separate in many places and the nitrogen bases are exposed. exposed. Okay? Um, that means the nitrogen bases are no longer bonded to each other. Nucleotides move in place and form new nitrogen base pairs. This produces two identical strands of DNA. Okay, so what is replication? We can now answer that. Again, that's in bold up here. Okay, um, and in class, we'll talk about that more specifically. Okay, making proteins. Proteins are important for every cellular process. The DNA of each cell carries a complete set of genes that provides instructions for making all the proteins a cell needs. Most genes contain instructions for making proteins. Some genes contain instructions for when and how quickly proteins are going to be made. Junk DNA. All genes are segments of DNA on a chromosome. However, an unbelievable 97% of the DNA on human chromosomes is not part of any gene. Okay, hey, segments of DNA that are not parts of genes are often called junk DNA. It is not known whether junk DNA has functions that are important to cells. And actually, they have found new information that um, that DNA is not actually junk. It just doesn't code for protein. It's more of like a regulatory function or it helps to control when the DNA is going to be used. The role of mRNA in making proteins. Okay, or the role of RNA. Okay, um, proteins are made with the help of ribonucleic acid. Ribonucleic acid is RNA, okay, rather than we were previously talking about DNA. 
Okay, RNA is a type of nucleic acid that carries the code for making proteins from inside the nucleus where the DNA is out to the cytoplasm, the liquid part of the cell outside of the nucleus. RNA also carries amino acids around, around inside a cell and forms part of the ribosomes. RNA like DNA is made of nucleotides, but the RNA is single-stranded while DNA is double-stranded. RNA also has a nitrogen base called uracil, while DNA has thymine, okay? Um, but in the case of RNA, RNA will pair, okay? And when it pairs up with DNA, the uracil will pair with adenine, or U will pair with A, since it does not have thymine. The first step in making protein is to make messenger RNA from DNA. The process of making messenger RNA from DNA is called transcription. During transcription, the messenger RNA nucleotides pair up with the DNA nucleotides. Completed messenger RNA can move into the cytoplasm. So we can now answer question number five. What is the role of RNA in protein production? Okay, so in looking at what RNA is, right, it carries the code for making proteins, okay, from the nucleus into the cytoplasm, okay? And it does that through the process called transcription, making mRNA from the DNA code. Okay, there are three types of RNA there. The three types are messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and ribosomal RNA. They work together to make proteins. The process of making a protein from RNA is called translation. Translation is shown below and occurs as messenger RNA moves through ribosome. Recall that ribosomes are organelles that are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Hey, not super important. Just know that ribosomes are organelles where proteins are going to be made. Okay, so in this picture down below, we can take a look at, we've got this ribosome. It's kind of this gray kind of egg looking shape. Hey, that ribosome, you'll see messenger RNA kind of runs through the ribosome. Okay, and then you'll see that there are what are called transfer RNAs that come and bind or attach to it. Okay, so transfer RNAs carry amino acids to the ribosomes. Okay, the rRNA helps form chemical bonds that attach one amino acid to the next. Okay, so I brought in this new amino acid. I'm a transfer RNA. Well, the ribosomal RNA is actually going to help attach that kind of dark gray amino acid to the other two lighter gray amino acids. Okay, so it forms a bond between them. The first transfer RNA separates from, from its amino acid and from the messenger RNA, and a third transfer RNA brings in another amino acid. Okay, so you see this transfer RNA, it's kind of the funky shaped Okay, it's like an upside down sort of T or kind of looks like a plus sign with like a base on the bottom. That's transfer RNA. So transfer RNA carries the amino acid ribosomal. RNA is going to attach the amino acids one to the next one. Okay, and then it shifts along and, it, and along comes another transfer RNA and the process will kind of continue until we get to the end of a gene. Okay, so what's the role of rRNA in translation? Okay, that is step number two here in our picture, right? It's going to ha help attach one amino acid to the next by forming a chemical bond. Okay, translating the RNA code. Making protein from mRNA is like using a secret code. Proteins are made of amino acids. The order of the nitrogen bases in messenger RNA determines the order of the amino acids in a protein. Three nitrogen bases on messenger RNA form the code for one amino acid. Each series of three nitrogen bases on mRNA is called a codon. There are 64 different codons that are possible, but only 20 amino acids. Some of the codons therefore code for the same amino acid. One of the codons codes for an amino acid that is the beginning of the protein. This codon signals that translation should start. Three codons do not code for any amino acid. They instead code for the end of a protein. They signal stop. 
Okay, so what is a codon? A codon is a three base sequence of messenger RNA. Okay, so that could be A U G, for instance. Okay, it's a three base sequence of messenger RNA that will code okay, for either a particular amino acid or a start or a stop signal. Mutations. Okay, a change in the nucleotide sequence of a gene is called a mutation. Sometimes mistakes happen during replication. Most mistakes are corrected before replication is finished. An uncorrected mistake can result in a mutation. Mutations can be caused by exposures to x-rays, ultraviolet light, radioactive materials, and sometimes of chemicals. That's why we try to limit our exposure to x-rays. That's why we wear sunscreen. That's why um, you don't expose yourself to radioactive materials unless you can help it. Hey, and certain chemicals are also bad enough and harmful enough that they can cause mutations to our DNA. Um, so you should be able to specify some causes of mutations right there using that last paragraph of that mutations paragraph, last sentence of that last paragraph. There are several types of DNA mutations. So now we're reading about types of mutations. In a deletion mutation, like you would expect, one or more nitrogen bases are left out of the DNA sequence. In an insertion mutation, one or more nitrogen bases are added to the DNA. In a substitution mutation, one nitrogen base is replaced by a different nitrogen base. Each type of mutation changes the sequence of the nitrogen base pairs. A change can cause a mutated code to the gene, mutated gene to code for a protein that is different from the normal gene. Some mutated genes do not code for any protein. For example, a cell might lose the ability to make one of the proteins it needs. An example of this would be like a type 1 diabetic. They can't make insulin, which is a protein that our body needs. Results of mutations. Sorry, what are some specific causes of mutations? You already should have answered that. That was question number eight. That was in the first mutations paragraph. Then it says, how do changes in the sequence of DNA affect traits? So that's what we're going to read about now where it says results of a mutation. The effects of a mutation depend on where in the DNA sequence the mutation happens and the types, type of mutation. Proteins express traits. Because mutations can change proteins, they can cause traits to change. Some mutations in human DNA cause genetic disorders. With more research, scientists hope to find cures and treatments for genetic disorders. Not all mutations have negative effects. Some mutations do not change proteins, so they do not affect traits. Other mutations can cause a trait to change in a way that benefits an organism. So how do changes in the sequence of DNA affect traits? Okay, well, they can cause genetic disorders or diseases because they can change proteins. Okay, um, they can not change proteins, so not have any effect on traits. Okay, or... Um, they can actually change the protein and benefit an organism. So create a protein that actually is going to function better. Okay? And that's the idea behind natural selection is that ability for mutations to actually lead to improved traits or traits that are more beneficial to an organism. Okay, so you should be able to answer question number nine. Um, here's our glossary. DNA is an organism's genetic material. Mutation is a change in the nucleotide sequence of a gene. A nucleotide is a molecule made of a nitrogen base, or sometimes it's called a nitrogenous base, or sometimes it's just called a base, a sugar, and a phosphate group. Replication, the process of copying a DNA molecule to make another DNA molecule, RNA, a type of nucleic acid that carries the code for making proteins from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. Transcription, and you'll notice transcription and translation are similar. They have similar functions, okay, but they are different. So it's important we recognize the key difference. 
So transcription is making messenger RNA from DNA. Okay, so DNA is being converted into messenger RNA. In translation, we make protein from RNA, or we convert RNA into proteins or RNA into a long chain of amino acids, which is what a protein is. Hey, review the definitions in the mini glossary and write as many sentences as you need to explain how DNA and RNA are related. Hey, what's the relationship between the genetic material and this RNA molecule? Hey, and then explain what happens during each type of mutation. Okay, so a short description of a deletion mutation, an insertion mutation, and a substitution mutation. Okay, um, that's going to be back here, right, in, um, in the first paragraph under types of mutations. Okay, so it'll be under there. Okay, and then question number three, how did writing a question, how did writing a question for each paragraph and finding the answer in the paragraph help you learn about DNA and genetics? Okay, so what's something that you learned by reading this um, section? There you go, people. Um, once you have it all completed, again, don't forget to hit the um, save button. Okay, so make sure you save your work. Okay, that save button will pop up at the top. And then you can submit your assignment. Thanks so much. Have a great day.